So thank you again for being a part of this. This is actually the first episode, so I really appreciate you being on and starting this thing off right. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, but first things first, I want to start this by getting your thoughts. And I know the season's about seven months away, but what are your early expectations and some of the things you're excited about as we enter this new year? Yeah, you know, we're excited about next year. I think, you know, we have the um, the blueprints here, you know, the change from Coach Lolly. You know, Coach Lolly here at Gordo did a great job. Um, but, you know, with new coaches, there's change in anything, and they had to figure me out, and I had to figure them out. You know, one thing I wanted to do when I first got here is I didn't want people to tell me what they played. I didn't want coaches to say, well, he played this last year and he played this last year. I wanted everyone to have a fresh start, and I wanted everybody to be able to play whatever they wanted to play. So throughout the season, a lot of our kids played tons of different positions, you know, uh, like Cole played cornerback, safety, linebacker, wide receiver. He played defensive tackle one time. So he he, he played a lot of different positions. So, you know, that's kind of what we wanted to do. But I think going into next year, to answer your question, um, <clears throat> I think we kind of know the blueprint. We know the expectations. We know, you know, I hate to use the word a culture because it's thrown around so much, but the new culture, I guess. Um, so that's behind us. <clears throat> but when you won a lot of games last year, like you guys did, I mean, how how far does that go in setting that kind of groundwork to having a successful second year? Yeah, um, for sure. I mean, I, being a new head coach, you know, my first year, and I believe what I was doing was going to work. But, you know, to make these kids here believe it, they were probably kind of iffy a little bit. Like, who is this guy coming in? You know, I've never coached a football game before. It's, it's you know, as far as being a head coach. Now I think that builds confidence and confidence builds culture and culture builds, you know, it's, it's, that's, that's, that's what you want, you know, and I, I feel like they believe in what I'm doing and I believe in what I'm doing. I believe in them. Um, you know, after the Bibb County game, I don't think anybody believed it too much, but, you know, we bounced back and, you know, I think moving forward, people feel good about what we're doing. And I, I, I feel, I think we're going to be better next year than we were this year. You talked about the Bibb County game uh, a couple of times when I covered you guys this past season. How much of an eye opener was that? And what lessons did you take away from that game? Yeah, uh, at the time, it was probably one of the worst things that's happened to me as 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 a coach, uh, besides losing those state championships. But uh, you know, it was it was humbling because you know I thought I was a great coach. <laughs> we thought we were doing good at practice. We thought we were rolling and. And uh, they humbled us. But now looking back, I'm, I'm glad it happened. I'm, I wish they'd have scored 100 on us. Um, and that they almost did. Uh, but but it, it humbled our kids, and it, it, it brought adversity, man. And it was like there was a lot of adversity in that game. There was a lot of adversity. The, you know, the whole next week we went pads every single day. Next, uh, You know, the next week we were in pads every day. Um, and we were hitting, and it was, you know, if you want to go, go, you know, so it brought adversity, and that's what life's all about, and that's what football's all about is overcoming adversity, and that's what we did. And then the next week versus Winfield, man, it was a shootout, and it was just a battle, and it was like, you know, it was 49-42. Ethan Wilder scored in the last play of the game, and it was almost like I would rather it have been 49-42 because there was so much adversity. We kept overcoming adversity and overcoming adversity. And the week before, as soon as something bad happened, we laid down and started pointing fingers and blaming, you know, the defensive tackles blaming, you know, things on the safety for not being able to tackle, you know. So we learned a lot of football that night and we learned a lot about ourselves. I know that we talked after that game, but did you, and you talked about how you think Gordo gets everybody's best shot, but did you think that Winfield was going to up the ante a little bit on you guys, given that their head coach has been on your side of the field before? Yeah, yeah, Coach McKinney does a great job over there. And, and, you know, I don't know much about that rival. Um, So going in, I think, you know, our kids were a little bit worried. But, you know, they were more worried about that rival than I was. Um, And I didn't really understand the magnitude of that game. But um, those their kids played hard, and we just kept trading punches and trading punches. And, and uh, man, I hate to even bring it up, but we <laughs> – there were – Referees killed us that night. And we killed ourselves, but yeah, it was like every time something big happened, then we'd get called back. And then the targeting penalty on the kickoff, and it was it, it was 42 to 28 with four minutes left in the game. We got a targeting penalty on the kickoff. They got the ball back and they scored the next play. And it was just, you know, it was uh but like I said, we just kept overcoming adversity. But uh Winfield's a good football team. 
that kind of leads me into another question uh, because the crowd that game was electric from pretty much start to finish. Can you talk about the impact that that had on your players and that you expect it to continue to have on your players going forward? Yeah, I mean, here at Gordo, like I said, we get everybody best shot. And I think a lot of people just want to come and see what we have going on here. So the teams we play travel very well because I think it's a cool place to come. And you know, everybody wants to, you know, see the mystique of Gordo. And, and our fans are unreal here. Um, they're, they show up every Friday night and they do such a good, you know, great job cheering. But like you said, I think, I mean, home field advantage here is, is, is on another level because, um, like you said, it was electric and our, our, you know, our, our, our kids feed off that. And, you know, I think, I think, you know, if there's no fans in the stands, then you're at practice and it feels like practice and, and nobody really likes practice. Um, you know, it was quiet out there. And, and I mean, at the end of the day, that's why we're doing this is for entertainment. Uh, and, you know, we want to entertain people and we want people to come. That that had to be one of the most entertaining football games <clears throat> at any level, though, that I have ever seen in my life. I mean, were yeah. there – were there points in the game? I mean, you get you get nervous when it's back and forth like that. Yeah, you know, it, you'd rather have a blowout, and, and and like I was saying, we went really, really hard at practice that week, and it was like we we make you know we may have lost the team that week if if we'd have lost that game, it would have been hard to come back and them believing, like I said, you know, like, just like you asked earlier, it would have been hard for them to believe in what we were doing because we we ran and we hit and we scrimmaged all week long. We were going to see who, you know, the toughest team was. And we came out, you know, we had a, two or three guys suspended that game for what they did in the bib game. Um, so it, it was, it was tough, but yeah, I mean, it was just trading blows and trading blows. And we just kept coming back. And um, yeah, you know, at like half of the third quarter, I looked at Corey Chapman, our, um, our pass game coordinator on defense. And said, I can't do this, man. <laughs> Like I'm worn out, and then after the game, we all came in here in the in the coach's office. I just put my feet on the desk and just like, I feel like I just played a game, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so, can you talk about the maturity of of the group though to come out and win that ball game after everything that that they faced the previous week and practicing super hard like they did and to have that result go their way and what it meant for the rest of the season. Yeah, you know, our leaders emerged that game. The Max Stevensons, the Brax Garrisons, um, they emerged that game. You know, Blaine Chandler's, uh, Jace Hathcox, those guys emerged, and we were waiting on those guys to kind of take, you know, who's going to lead us, you know. When something goes bad, it can't be me that's leading us all the time because in great teams, the players lead. In bad teams, the coaches always have to lead. Uh, so we want our players to to lead, and we saw a lot. We saw a lot about character in that game, and you know, kids stepping up and say, "Hey, it's okay, it's okay. Just keep, you know, keep working. You know, like let's go." And 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 that was good to see. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was uh that was that was a big turning point for our season, I think. And we, you know, I think we won what ten straight after that or something. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that game next year. I heard. You know, Winfield has a great environment up there also. You know, Coach McKinney does a great job there. Yeah, I was going to ask, is that – so that's – I assume that's one of the games you're looking forward to this upcoming season. What are some of the other matchups that you know about that you're already getting excited about in 2023? Yeah, you know, yeah. I, you know, when you're a new coach, I think all of them are big. And when you coach at Gordo, all of them are big. Uh, you know, you, so they're, all the games are big. But, um, yeah, I mean, that Bibb County game – we want some payback for that one. You know, on a personal level, we want it. and Our players want it. So we'd like to go there and embarrass them at their place like they embarrassed us here. Doing that and saying that is two different things. Coach Gohagen does an amazing job with those guys down there. Um, but, yeah, we'd like to go back and pay them back. Um, and, you know, we'd also like to get back to Piedmont. Um, that's, that's the ultimate goal, I think. You know, the North goes through Piedmont in 3A. Um, so, we, you know, We'd like to go back through there and 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 pay them back as well. But like I said, when you're at Gordo, the, every game's pretty big. Can you talk about your first after your first season is done? What it's meant to you, even as you've had your your first season, and now that you can reflect on that, what what the job has meant to you up to this point? 
Gosh. Yeah. I mean, sometimes I look back and say, I just can't believe I'm here. Like, how did I do this? You know, you know, I, I, I have a pretty cool story, you know, and, and, you know, I was a firefighter for 17 years and I coached football on the side and, um, you know, I got to coach under some great coaches and coach Vickery and at Daphne and Ham Barnett, uh, who's the head coach at St. Paul's now. Um, and then coach Cottrell down at, at Mobile Christian and then Cody Flournoy at Jackson last year with the semis. So I've been, you know, I've been a part of some good teams. I've been around some great coaches. And um, so it was kind of a destiny thing. We're like, man, okay, I, I got to finish school and do this. And um, this, everything was about timing. And uh, this job came open and, and uh, man, I'm just blessed to be here. And, you know, I, I've got a lot of friends that are pretty jealous of me. Of, this is my first head coaching job. Like, hey, but I, I applied for some bad jobs too. And I would have taken a bad job, uh, you know, not many coaches win 11 games their first year, but the difference in me and a lot of coaches is that I wasn't, I'm not satisfied with 11 wins. There's only one goal. And um, the only thing we talk about, think about here is, is, is playing for state championship and winning the state championship. So what would you say are some of your, your main coaching philosophies? Love man. We, we, uh, you know, we had to do it quick this year. But, uh, you know, especially for me and Coach Lett, who came from Mobile Christian with me, uh, you, man, you got to love them first, and then you you teach and demand. You teach and demand. You teach and demand. And you can't demand it until you teach them. And you can't, you know, you really can't teach them until you love them. And then, you know, but you but at the end of the day, you got to have desire. So that's kind of things we hang our hat on is, is love, teach, demand, and they got to have the desire to receive it you know and and um if they players have a hard time of accepting it you know I, I have a preacher friend um in jackson we live next door to him and i'll make this story real short but he you know he, he came over one night and we we're sitting on the back porch talking and he said you know our jobs are kind of the same he's a baptist preacher our jobs are kind of the same and like no they're not ben and he said well we're both trying to get people to go somewhere like we're trying to get them to a certain point and we teach them and we teach them and they have bad games or they have a bad Friday night and they'll go out and party and then they come to church and I have to, you know, tell them the way and tell them the way. Um, but the problem is when you teach somebody, you teach somebody and they, they're not willing to accept it. But when you're willing to accept Christ and you're willing to accept a football coach, um, then, then, the, you know, that's when you become a great football player and that's when you become a great Christian. And those aren't my words. Those are a Baptist preacher's words. So I'm not comparing heaven to uh, football. Have any of your coaching beliefs or any of those philosophies, how have they evolved since you became a head coach? That's a good question. Um, yeah, you, you know, on my, on my phone for the past 12 years, probably, I had, I had in my notes, it said head coaching things. And every time I thought about something I wanted to do when I became a head coach, I put it in my notes. And, you know, I went back over those all the time and I checked a whole bunch of them off this year. Um, but there's a lot of things that you want to do that, 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 you know, that really aren't possible that just need time maybe. Um, but, you know, as far as, um, as far as, uh, you know, things that I would do differently, maybe, uh, you know, I don't think there, I don't, I really don't think there is any, I think we practice, we practice hard. We got after it. And, um, I'd, lo I'd love to be able to, to take care of my coaches a little better with the money situation. It's tough being a, it's, it's tough being a volunteer coach, man. It's a lot of time. It's, I think it's the only business that somebody would come out here and work 10, 12 hours a day and not get paid a dime. Um, or, or, hey, be up here on Sunday and, you know, they come up here and do it. And you can think of a normal job if your job called you and said, hey, come up here on Sunday for eight hours or, hey, you know, come up here for a couple hours today. You would say, well, where, I mean, where do I clock in at, you know? And I've had those jobs and I was a firefighter. I, I, I mean, I wouldn't have went to work for free. So I just wish I could take care of them a little better. Would you be willing to maybe share some of those things that you had on your, on your head coaching list? I mean, not the whole, yeah. maybe not the whole shebang, but maybe just some of those. Yeah. Things? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Head coaching stuff. I don't know if you can, I don't know if you can see it, but it says head coaching, head coaching stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, the first one's dummies laying sideways to start practice with a high energy. 
And we did that every day. We laid the dummy sideways. And when the kids came out of the locker room, all the coaches were standing on each side. And we had bags and dummies in our hand. And we would hit them, you know, and make sure they're ready. And there's music playing, you know, just, just little things like that. Because it's just things I've learned over the years where you got to be ready to go out there. Your mindset's got to be ready. And I've seen a lot of teams where, uh, you know, and I was part of where they were people scraggling and they, you know, come out of the lo- you know, locker room for practice and, hey, where's so-and-so at? And he's still in there getting taped. So we made sure we all came out together. And, you know, I told them, you know, there's strength in numbers. They're, you know, we're a gang. And and uh, a gang of three doesn't look very, you know, scary. But a gang of 70 looks pretty scary, though. Um, kids in the locker room before the games. So, like, young kids, you know, come to the locker room and, and um, you know, see how we do things, see how we act. And I wanted, you know, those little kids to be around our kids. And because it's it's for the little kids, but it's also – it goes back to our players, our high school players looking down like, hey, man, I'm somebody. These I mean, these kids are looking up to us and, and how I act on that field out there. People are watching. And so I wanted little kids to be around them a lot. Um, uh, number five is a barber on Thursdays. I hadn't got to that, one, but we're going to get a, a, a barber shop here and uh, kids are going to get haircuts on Thursdays because they all want to leave practice early Thursdays and go get haircuts. So I hadn't got to that one yet, but uh, hopefully soon. Well, a couple more here. Um, uh, you know, number 10 is, you know, kind of how uh, we just talked about where it says toughness, uh, toughness, discipline, details, and desire. That's kind of my, I guess, you know, philosophy. Uh, um, you got to be tough. You got to be disciplined. Um, there's got to be details, but more importantly, you got to have the desire to uh, take on all that stuff. Um, you, you know, just things like that. Uh, um, and, you know, there's a few more good ones, but, but you know, just small stuff like that. Last question for me. Uh, I know you had a really good football team last year and it goes without saying that you're expecting to replicate that success this season. What are some of the things that you want to see your team do to make this year even better than last year? You know, we got to get in the way. You know, we, we, um, you know, I think everybody says that, but, but we really have to get in the weight room. Um, we have to do a better job that we have good football players, but at the end of the day, the biggest, strongest kids win everything, even, in T-ball where you see the little, you know, the chubby kid out there that's hitting them to the fence. You know, he might not be the fastest, but he's going to be the strongest. So, you know, I think Piedmont kind of had their will with us. Um, and, and, and I think our kids saw that. And so, you know, we got to get in the weight room and, and, and um, just get stronger, I think. Well, I really appreciate your time tonight, Coach. Again, thank you for being on. Thank you for being a part of this. I, I really appreciate it, and uh, I wish you luck this fall yeah. and, and going forward, man. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. You do a great job. Thank you. Have a good night. Yeah, you too.